Hello and welcome to the Midnight Academy, the official webcast for Vampire the Eternal Struggle. Over the next few months we're going to be running regular features including news and events reports from the global VTES community. We're also going to be talking to some of the big names on the competitive scene, taking a look at the decks that work for them. Now you may have seen the rough demo version of the deck clinic we posted at the end of last year. and It seems that Nurgle and the Barley have got a lot of fans out there. We've received loads of emails asking us to go into more detail for our first webcast. And so with a minimum of preamble, here it is. Nurgle's a group 5 Barley vampire. Traditionally a heavy bleeder with good access to block denial. But arguably his best feature is his ability to reduce the cost of any card he plays by one blood once per turn. In light of this, cards from some of the more recent expansions make him a viable basis for an interesting take on the classic wall deck archetype. He's got superior ore specs and demoinian, which means he can generate a lot of intercept when he needs it, since the sin also doubles as a really hefty bleed boost for a quick oust. The problem with using infernal minions in a wall deck is the fact they have to pay a pull to untap every turn, so you're going to have to use reaction cards which allow them to block while tapped, or you're going to have to find a cheap way of untapping them. Nogal can afford to pay the extra blood for Ruta's hand so that he doesn't take the aggravated damage, or you can use the reaction card Forced Vigilance, which enables him to stay untapped after he blocks an action, or to untap as a reaction. Now the main combo which makes this deck interesting is Undying Thirst and Bloodstorm of Corazin. They're both reaction cards which can only be played by Barley Vampires. When you successfully block a vampire, you put Undying Thirst on the vampire and it stays in play for the rest of the game. There's no real way to remove it. While they have this card on them, a vampire can't take any action other than Diablerie as long as there's a vampire on the table in Torpor. That could be one of your vampires, another player's vampires, any vampire. Bloodstorm of Corazin really adds insult to injury in this deck. Play it when you successfully block a younger vampire to cancel combat and do one unpreventable damage to your opponent. It's going to be important in a deck like this that requires just a few key vampires. You don't want them dropping to torpor unnecessarily. Having said that, later on you will want vampires to go into torpor to take full advantage of the Undying Thirst. The safest and easiest way for a wall deck to send vampires to torpor is to use Rot Shrek. You'll have access to aggravated damage through permanent tech like the Ivory Bow, or the Demonian combat card Conflagration, which Nurgle can reduce in cost to zero. It also has a nice inferior potence ability for supporting vampires, which enables it to do two range damage. When vampires with Undying Thirst start trying to Diablerize, you're going to have to keep blocking them. You don't necessarily want to hurt them, you just don't want them to succeed, which is where Bloodstorm of Corazin comes in again. As long as there are still vampires in torpor on the table, they can't take any further actions. This dynamic gives some interesting table options, the most obvious being to put Undying Thirst on your Predator's vampires and then knock your Prey's vampires into torpor. They'll be wasting each other's resources, buying you more time to make that oust. Alternatively, you can use the threat of a cross-table Undying Thirst to lock down any vampire who's going to be threatening your game plan with unnecessary votes or dangerous actions. A deck with just one vampire is going to suffer horribly at the hands of block denial, so you're going to want to recruit some supporting vampires as well. Petaniqua and Azaneel both share some of Nurgle's disciplines. Unfortunately, other Barley are generally too expensive to run alongside him, so you're going to want to look to the other clans for vampires with Orspex or Obfuscate. Very small vampires, capacity 2 or 3, they're going to be much more useful later on when they start to lose blood. They're going to be able to act with relative impunity because nobody's going to want to block them in case they accidentally knock them into torpor, which would set off Undying Thirst all over again. When you've got permanent tech in play, like the Ivory Bow, Sport Bike, or even the Bowler Convergence, that's going to give you a lot more useful blockers because any vampire can use them. Of course, there are some actions which vampires just can't block, so you're going to want to consider having some mortal allies in there as well. Carlton Van Wyck is probably your best choice. He's got plus one intercept when vampires are acting, and he's got a dodge which is going to help him stay alive in combat a little bit longer. You can also burn him if a vampire has committed Diablery since your last turn, to burn that vampire without a blood hunt. That's going to be helpful if somebody else on the table has got vote lock, and it's proving a problem. Of course, you still need to oust your prey. Nurgle does have an inherent bleed of three, and you can make that bleed a little bit more responsible by adding a few copies of Perfect Clarity or Approximation of Loyalty. If you're not too worried about Archon Investigation, you can throw away a Sense the Sin to give him five bleed in one action. 
In addition to intercept, Nurgle can also wrangle his disciplines to give some interesting stealth or block denial options. You can play Elder Impersonation, or you can try Psychomachia. This is going to help you get your bleeds through, also allows you to play with some of the more interesting actions you've got available, like the various condemnations. If you can manage to get it into play, Contagion means that every other Methuselah is going to be burning a pool during each of their untap phases. Unfortunately that's going to paint a bit of a target on the acting vampire, it's going to attract a lot of table hate. Having said that, the card also has good synergy with Sense the Sin if you play it at the superior level, generate some extra intercept if you don't mind toying with younger vampires in combat instead of sending them to torpor. Nurgle's a patient guy. He's been around for thousands of years, so he's not going to mind taking a little while to build up that perfect combo. Don't be tempted to charge in before you're ready. We're going to leave you with this new version of the deck. It's based on the 2007 Welsh Continental Qualifiers finalist, but it's a little bit more stable, it takes advantage of the 4-5 grouping, and it also includes cards from some of the newer sets. Enjoy! <laughs>